Testing one, two, testing one, two. <laughs> Back home in Nigeria, I was more a sheltered person. Um, we came with my mom. She had three kids and we were not practicing at all. I had drivers. We had maids. So, no, let me tell you, like, I felt so Sweet. privileged back home. In here. Nigeria, me to all be stupid rich. But here, baby, can I borrow $50,000? <laughs> so, the whole Nigeria is a community. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't know I was supposed to pay for myself. Because back home, you have parties and stuff. And <laughs> pe- you're literally the one paying for everybody else. And so that was one of the biggest culture shock. And since then, I learned my lesson. <laughs> I said, yeah, daddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> In Nigeria, they suffer, you know. A lot of things that you have here is because you worked for it. Mm. Hey, <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> okay, let's do an intro. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Moose and you're watching XOXO Moose. I knew you knew it. I knew you knew it. I ain't had to tell her. I knew she knew it. <laughs> yeah, I watch it so much. Okay. Yeah. So we are here for episode number two of our Ramadan talk show. So today, for the very first time, I have a very, very special guest here by the name of... Latifa Adediji. <laughs> okay, welcome, sis. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for coming. <laughs> this is my first time on this show, y'all. Yes. The XLX Level Two show. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna be talking about today, Latifa? Based on your understanding, at least. Uh, it's gonna be about the culture shock in um as a Nigerian American. Well, would I say Nigerian American? Well, yeah, yeah Nigerian, Nigerian American. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so by the way, if y'all didn't know, I don't tell people any details of what I'm gonna talk about. I just give them a topic because yeah. it just really just gets you flowing, and you mm-hmm. you about to feel it. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So what I want to discuss with Latifa. Is really about living life in the United States. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I want to talk about this topic is because I personally, I came from Nigeria when I was three years old. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much grew up in America. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, you know, come to America for school and things like that. And they are shocked. They say this America life is not <laughs> it. No, for real though. And a lot of people think <laughs> it is it. So I want you to really tell us about your experience Mm -hmm. and we're just going to talk about your experience challenges you faced and Mm -hmm. how you were even able to you know knock down those challenges Mm -hmm. because this america life is really not it so just tell us a little bit about you and your journey and things like that so i came to the u.s when i was 14 um you know i started from i think sophomore but I had to fight to be a sophomore because, you know, when you come as yeah. a new student, whatever, to high school, they always want to start you from ninth grade. But I was like, oh, I was like in my junior year in high school back in Nigeria. And I was like, oh, no, I cannot start from ninth grade because I went to I think I took a week of ninth grade classes. And I was like, nah, this is yeah, I, I, I'm too <laughs> smart for this. Like, I'm just going to pass all those classes and not care about school. So I talked to my counselor, everything. I became a sophomore. I didn't like my high school experience. I'm not going to lie because like back then everyone already had their cliques. Mm. I saw how people would dress to school and I'd be like, back in Nigeria, we used to wear <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> to school. So all of this was just like so different for me and all of that. And it was hard making friends because like I said, everyone had their cliques. Mm. There was like the bossy ones. There was the, I don't know, jerk ones, uh-huh. nerdy ones. I don't know what they used to call everyone. You know, everybody just had who they had talked to. Mm-hmm. But people would talk to me, but it was mostly in my classrooms. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'll have friends, like, just for science class or for, like, algebra or, like, and then I was, like, top of my class in most all of my classes and so I was just like they just wanted to I guess they wanted to benefit off of me Mm. and like oh things that I knew and stuff like that so high school was just like not good for me I I think like my um senior year was kind of like a little bit chill because like everybody then would just I guess we were just aiming for college type of thing and then there were some Nigerians that started coming to school and then so I just made friends with like the Nigerian over there and then we had like our own clique then and then we'll be bringing different food to school and so <laughs> people have been looking at us funny but that's when I started like feeling like okay but then it was the end of my senior year so and I started working then so I would just focus on school working and just moving forward with my life and moving on but then you know I started attending Mumineen and you know there is like a 
bunch of like tell, tell them what Mumineen is oh Mumineen is the Nigerian masjid in Houston mm-hmm. um it's part of the NCN normal chapter yeah. I think so we uh, have three Nigerian mus- Muslim masjids in yeah. Houston yeah so we have Nasra and Saradin and then Mumini. Mm-hmm. And I, my, because my mom was like always selling two at Mumini every Friday. <laughs> so I used to have to go to the masjid. And so I started have, um, getting friends there. You know, my mom would be like, talk to this person, talk to this other person. But so for Alhamdulillah, like, you know, that started um, making me more active in the community. And then I started getting knowing more people. And then, you know, over time, I walked my way through college and now I'm working and you know yeah. I've been able to face all the other challenges along the way I can say for the most part like all my friends are Nigerians like I have no shame in saying that uh-huh. because it's just I guess what I resonate like I can uh, better like there everybody the connect is the, there. yeah the connect yeah. is there. I don't have to like not be myself exactly. like be, having Nigerian friends makes me myself exactly. and so I I have no shame in that, though. So Period. just saying that. <laughs> you talked about a couple of things, mm-hmm. you know, la- navigating school life here in America. Mm-hmm. How about navigating, you know, social life here in America? What was different? I know a lot of people, they say, like, in Nigeria, they can just go outside and find what they need. Mm-hmm. But here, it's like, you got to know how to drive, for example. And then you need money. And you got to understand the currency. Yeah. So how are you able to, like, navigate all of those literally small stuff that play a huge role? And you know, you're in the daily life, in a person's yeah. daily life. Because my parents are strict Nigerian. So they didn't like want me to socialize too much. As much as like they were like, Oh, I want you to like be active in the masjid, that's all they would want. They wouldn't want me to go out with my friends, like let's mm-hmm. say we have dinner parties. Cause mm-hmm. at the time I started college, everyone that's when people started going for dinner parties for uh-huh. their birthdays and things like that. And that used to be so fun. And in my head I'll be like, Oh, I wish I could go because you know, but my parents would be like, No, you can't go. But then when I, because I had started working and before I even started working, you know, Nigerian parents, they're like, no, you only have to focus on school, school. every day. So I felt like I had to show them that this will benefit me in the long run, mm-hmm. which it has, to be honest, because yeah. it gave me that independency that I didn't think I needed, but I actually needed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I was able to like start like my working, my work life, my school life, everything. And they saw how focused I was. And so they would let me go for social activities, birthday parties. I don't know. There were other things. We'll go out for brunch, things like that. So I was able to like start networking that way and at school too i would just like put myself in positions where um let's say i joined an organization mm. and um they'll have like career fairs i'll just always try to put myself out there and that was how i was able to navigate like the social life there and it, it made sense so i wonder were your parents not wanting you to like go out because of the stereotypical stereotypes of what they thought would happen you know here it's like you go outside you get killed type stuff. <laughs> So it's like, it's not safe. And yeah. like people always say, abroad is way safer than America, yeah. 100%. So is it like those stereotypes that they thought or what, what do you think? It, it was, was more stereotypes of like how they wanted an, their daughter to be, to oh. be a homebody, to mm. be only caring for her siblings and the family. So they didn't want me to like start like adapting to like the American culture where, you know, you can just do whatever and your parents will never know you're home until they see the car or something, yeah. things like that. So they've heard things like that and they didn't want me to also be like that. Oh, so wow. they just wanted to know where I was every time, make sure like my siblings are taken care of, they're taken care of. And also they didn't really care about if I was taken care of, <laughs> not going to lie, but they just, at the end of the day, you know, they still care for my well being and stuff. Like, has that always been you back home in Nigeria? Were you sh- a sheltered person? Were you kind of like to yourself, went to school and came back home? How were you like growing mm-hmm. up in Nigeria? Back home in Nigeria, I was more, a sheltered person um like my dad will only make me go to school come back home i had drivers we had maids so no let me tell you like i felt so privileged back home and then coming here having to now fight to Uh be independent because they also wanted me to be sheltered but then i knew that being sheltered would not work for me in the long run because and and that's work for anyone it wouldn't because i know the culture shock here is the fact that like nigerians will come here and will be like oh we're just gonna just sit down everything like i don't know like everything will come type of thing but the hard truth is that you have to actually find a way to be independent outside of like your parents because 
um, the parents will provide for you, but mm. you also have to provide for yourself. So, so that was something I had to learn. Not, I didn't learn the hard way. I just learned from seeing how people were around me. Yeah. Like the kids will, you know, say they're going to work at like a, what's it called? Food stuff, like a McDonald's. Rest, McDonald's and things like that. And I was like, but I didn't want that. So uh-huh. my first job was actually a corporate job. Oh, and so wow. I was so happy that oh, I didn't job. get to be like the typical like uh what's it called adult young adult uh-huh. like that work in mcdonald's or like fast food chains and stuff like that so yeah, yeah it was very different and starting making money at a young age at the, back then i used to take money from my dad's <laughs> cousin or whatever i'll go to get money and things like that but here i had to learn to get money for myself so for that yourself. was like the first culture shock and i was like okay it's okay we'll figure it out and over time i started seeing little things here and there and i'll be like okay one other thing from social life is where you know you go to birthday party not mm-hmm. birthday parties birthday um dinners, dinners. and stuff <laughs> and then what's it called people everybody, everybody is to their so everybody has to pay their own bill first time i went for a birthday dinner and my friend literally like you know she invited me and i was like okay cool you know let's go and then at the end, I saw everybody already pull out their wallet and stuff. Girl. And in my head, I was like, huh? And by the way, I didn't know what to expect. I just thought, oh, we're going for a birthday dinner. That's uh-huh. it, right? And then, uh, then uh, you know, everybody started paying. I was like, okay. Then I, one of my friends that I went with, I was like, oh, can you pay for me? I didn't bring my card or whatever. I don't think, I don't know if I didn't bring my card or something, but I had to have her pay for me so I could send her the money mm. because I didn't know I was supposed to pay for myself because back home you have parties and stuff <laughs> and pe- you're literally the one paying for everybody else. And so that was one of the biggest culture shock. And since then I learned my lesson. <laughs> also, other within your means type yes. of thing because like you're the one paying for yourself so yeah that's, and that's the thing because you know even till now mm-hmm. my parents with my dad or my parents mm-hmm. hold a graduation dinner they're paying for everyone yeah my I parents think, do that yeah too. i think yeah th- i think it definitely is something that's practiced back mm-hmm. home because that's exactly what my parents do if they say we're going out for your birth for your graduation yeah they're paying for everybody that comes but us here <laughs> baby, everybody bring the money. <laughs> All of us would just pay for ourselves and stuff. But yeah, that's a shock. That's, that's important that you brought that up. Mm-hmm. I think that's huge. So I did want to bring up something that you discussed earlier. You mentioned, you know, back home, you had maids, you mm-hmm. had drivers. So, you know, with being that, you know, and when you come here in America, it's people are confused and people mm-hmm. don't realize a lot of things that you have here is because you worked for it. Mm-hmm. And really, truly, truly, you do have to figure things out for yourself. Yeah. Before you can even drive, there's a step to it. I'm yeah. pretty in Nigeria. I mean, they do have driver licenses. Yeah, so yeah, they, not really yeah. Sure. But I didn't. I didn't even have to drive. You didn't have to think about I didn't even it. think. I didn't have to think about having to drive till I got here. So, so did the, you have any like any concerns, or were you kind of like a little scared about how you're gonna be able to do this? Seeing that, oh my gosh, you know, I don't have that type of assistance, yeah. that type of luxury anymore. Mm-hmm. I think I was a little bit scared in the beginning, but because of the way my um my parents had brought me up, like even my dad, like he always told me that, you know, when you have to be independent, you have to, you would, when you get to that stage, you know when to be independent okay. type of thing. So I remember my mom used to send me to like my uncle's place during like summer or long vacations back in summer before, you know, sometimes you travel, sometimes you don't. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I'll go, I'll go learn how to cook. I'll learn, I'll come back. I'll be like, mommy, I let this, I let this. Cause I was very spoiled growing up. So that was just their way of like trying to show that, you know, life can be different in, in other people's yeah. place, like wherever you go to. So coming here, I was a little bit scared, but then I remember all those teachings and stuff that my lessons, my parents taught me when I was growing up. So I just kind of had that in my head. I was like, okay, Latifa, you're here. This is different. You just have to adapt to whatever is being shown at you. And alhamdulillah, I figured it out. And I'm glad that you're actually saying this because a lot of people have this thought that in Nigeria, they suffer, you know, oh my gosh, you don't want to live there. (laughs) I literally lived in Nigeria for one year for boarding school. Mm -hmm. And till today, I regret not staying for a longer period of time. Aside from the fact, like when I was in boarding school, I didn't really feel like I was in Nigeria because mm-hmm. literally, like we have a schedule. You wake up at this time, you yeah. at this time. I really didn't have to do much for myself, mm-hmm. but I feel like I learned so much about me. Mm-hmm. Like be, being able to have that independence, mm-hmm. you don't get that 
at a young age. My parents yeah. too did not let us work. Yeah. Even call till college, my dad said no. Yeah. I got a job at five below one time. I worked for one day. <laughs> and you know, I can't believe they actually made yeah. me. <laughs> they actually sent me a check oh, to my house. You. Oh my god, that's funny. I worked for one day and I never went back. My dad mm-hmm. kept saying, No, you don't need to work, face your study. And my dad, you know, I wanted to major in mm-hmm. um education. I wanted to be a teacher growing yeah. up. So my dad was like, if you were to ever get a job, I want you to get a job that is related to education. So maybe yeah. you should substitute or yeah. start a bigger. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah, daddy, like five below was hiring. Girl, I went yeah. to the hiring man. I did not tell him. I shot, he called me and I said, yeah, I got a job. And he was like, I told you, you didn't listen. <laughs> da, 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 da. So Girl. you just worked for one day and that was it. That, that's not even why I stopped working. <laughs> I can't even, I just stood for eight hours. Oh. I stood for eight hours. I said, yeah, daddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> that's I should have listened when he told me not no, to work. Girl, yeah, because truly, truly, it's not like our parents don't provide for mm-hmm. us. It's because we just want it so bad. We see our yeah. friends; they have work schedules. Mm-hmm. They get to spend the money anyhow. Yeah. And that's us be like, let me ask my mom. <laughs> and then you kind of have that. Oh, I don't know what they'll say. I know, of course, yeah. our friends will say yes most times. But before they say yes, the trouble you go through. <laughs> but yeah, those are part yeah. of the reasons why I wanted to work. Too. And I don't think I think a lot of people do see maybe like. Nigerian parents as mean and strict. Mm-hmm. I think a huge part of it is that they just want to take care of their children. Mm-hmm. Like you're my child. Let me yeah. take care of you. Let me provide it for you. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to go out there to figure it out on your own. Even though at some point we do. Yeah. That's why some people do struggle because they figure it out on their own too late. A lot of men they struggle because they yeah. figure it out on their own too late. Mm-hmm. Us women, we're like, nah, I want to yeah. do it now. <laughs> let me go see. Let me learn how to drive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let me do all those things that will make me be better for myself. Yeah. So. But that's where it comes from. Like that's how our parents are just are. They just want to like take care of us. You get back home from college, they want you to move back in. They don't want you to leave until you're married. And yeah, it's not really a bad thing. It's not. It's not. But some, let me tell you, so, you your mental health to pay back. But <laughs> your mental health, yeah, is your rent. It's, that's basically <laughs> it. Because oh my god, the emotional trauma. They'll be like, oh, yeah. you'll be like, oh, I want to go out this day, this time. <laughs> oh, what what time? <laughs> you're supposed to be back home. They'll tell you your curfew is at 10 p.m. If you oh, if you come 10 15, don't come back into this house. Don't come back. <laughs> Go back to where you're coming from. So many things. Ah, oh, subhanallah. But, yeah, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I have this question that I really want to ask you because this is something that I hear a lot of people talk about. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about practicing Islam mm-hmm. in Nigeria versus U.S. I okay. do hear a lot that it's so easy to practice Islam in Nigeria mm-hmm. and it's so hard to practice in America. Yeah. So what was your experience and what would you say? Like, is that true? Yeah, it is because back in Nigeria, I used to have like a teacher. My teacher would come like a set schedule. I'll, I'll go to work. I'll go to school. I said work. <laughs> so I'll go to school. I'll come back home. Sometimes I have Islamic teacher come um, teach me or some days it's just like, oh, my lesson teacher for actual school. So it just depends. Like for me, it was very easy to practice because yeah. we had a salatus. We, yeah. we go for Friday Juma. Like in my assistant, especially the school I went to, my high school, it was in the university. So University of Lagos. Yeah. And so they have a masjid. So me and my friends, like all my uh, Muslim friends, we literally would... After school ends, we're running to the masjid for Friday Juma. Wow, so it was love. so, it was very interesting for me. Yeah. Like, you know, growing up, like having to experience it with like my friends over there, mm. you know, after school, we'll go to Juma. And then each one of us had like our own um, Islamic teacher come teach us. Mm. And then we'll practice. Like we just used to have so much fun, especially Ramadan. We'll all get together, things like that. Yeah. But coming here was very different for me because to be honest, I'm this type of person that I'm very forgetful of. Um, past experiences that wasn't meaningful in my life. So when I first got here, I don't even remember how my Ramadan was. I think like for the most part, because of the fact that it wasn't as memorable, it wasn't as it used to be. Mm-hmm. I just kind of just went through the whole process until when Jan- COVID hit, mm-hmm. when um, Jana's sister started and, mm-hmm. and I felt that whole bonding again like mm. that bonding i used to have in my in nigeria, in nigeria with my um, muslim friends and every even guys and girls we used to like get together talk yeah. and stuff like that it was so fun and so until covid happened and then uh, everything just changed you know everybody was like where are we going to get that community from all mm. of that so um yeah and then i started like having to like okay get closer to like the dean it's not that like my dean was tethered anyway it mm. was just like 
wasn't the same. Like my t- parents tried several Sami teachers for oh. everybody, but my siblings were not very motivated, but I was, I was like, I want to go back because back then I'd already like memorized a lot of, um, IS, mm-hmm. like Suras, like my teachers will make me like, I even did, um, Walima. Wow, <laughs> I did a Walima. <laughs> no, you know, back then you do Walima. You'd be like, yeah. Oh my God, I'm so good. <laughs> like I'm so knowledgeable in the dean. That's and then so you start wild. Islamic studies, all that stuff. Uh-huh. But coming here, I felt like the first four years or five years, I, I was just like in the knowledge of what I had learned. Mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to like continue my education and mm-hmm. stuff like that because it was just hard to find a teacher mm-hmm. that would meet your schedule. And then, you know, we work, school, everybody. I think life was just going on yeah. until I had to reprioritize myself and be like, okay, I actually want to learn to be better as a Muslim, um, you know, sister and like um, just person in general. So yeah, and Genesis has really played a huge part in that. So I'm so grateful for Genesis. And I can, I can really connect with what you're saying because even with my short amount of time mm-hmm. in Nigeria, like Nigeria is so easy to find everything. You yeah. need a teacher, boom. They'll find it for you. <laughs> anything you need. Yeah. You need 10 tables, you need 50 chairs. <laughs> like someone around you got it. Mm-hmm. And in Nigeria itself, I think this is the difference. The whole Nigeria is a community. Yeah. But here, it's everybody is on their own. There's sections of the community. Yeah. So it's, you can't just walk outside and feel here and mm-hmm. feel involved. You got to find it. Yeah. In Nigeria, everybody look like you, you know? <laughs> people look like you, people yeah. dress like you. You feel there. Here, yeah. you got to find that. So, I mean, I think, you know, being able, having a Nigerian Muslim mm-hmm. ministry is a blessing. That also is a blessing. Even for, our, like, our parents, too. Like, when my, my mom came here, she was, we came with my mom. She had three kids, and we were not practicing at all. Like, back home in Nigeria, you know, it's normal to just wear a turban and things like that. And that's exactly yeah. how my mom was. Yeah. She'd cover her head with her turban. I forgot. Exactly yeah. Like I used to wear turban turbans. back in Nigeria. But when I got here, then I was like, okay, I actually want to start wearing the hijab. Oh. So I did start wearing the hijab when I started high school. But hey, Oh, okay. When mm-hmm. you came here. Yeah, when school. I came here. Yes. But like, yeah, my mom, she used to wear wigs to work. <laughs> like, because we don't know that. Honestly speaking, like, yes, the, the Islam is very, very powerful in Nigeria, but there were just a lot of things that we didn't know. Mm-hmm. Us too. We, we used to celebrate all the holidays. That's something Nigerians do, though. <laughs> That's they celebrate okay. Christmas. Yeah. Halloween. Well, they don't do Halloween. They don't but do Halloween, but... Every holiday in Nigeria yeah. is celebrated. It's celebrated, for <laughs> and sure. We were celebrating everything until <laughs> my mom met her best friend. Who literally like taught us mm-hmm. a lot, and that's how we, she, that's how we even knew about Muslim Mumini. She told mm-hmm. her about Mumini, oh. and then we started going there. But before yeah. that, we were going to Mother Islamia. Oh, and you know these people yeah. that don't look like mm-hmm. us. We used to honestly like get backlash for being black oh, wow. and all that stuff. So that's what we had to deal with up until we found that community. So that yeah. community is really important. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm at Mumini, when I'm at Mumini, I feel like I'm at home. I feel yeah. like. These are my people. You, you should know? come to Mumini do yes. that's on cut there. Oh my god. Girl. That bonding experience. Oh you feel it. Asalatu. Everything. The lecture. Even our imam. Like sometimes you think the founders is too much, but let me tell you, when they start singing that song, when they start trying to get money for you, be like, ah, this is this is reminding me of back home and how it Literally. used to be. But I'm I really want it. I really wish to experience Ramadan Nigeria. People say it's like a life changing. It thing. is. It is. I ah, want to experience. It Ramadan. is. To be honest, I feel like maybe next year, inshallah, I'll plan for that because I really I like want to. to. Oh yeah, like oh also, I always forget when it's Eid time. Oh my God, you should see oh, the way people would dress yes. up. Let me tell you, it's on a whole different level. Even though like some people are struggling. But subhanAllah, they always still find a way to dress up and show out mm-hmm. to the Eid um, ground. And we used to pray on, like, we'll go to, like, a school, mm-hmm. pray on the Eid floor or whatever. And it's always just so interesting to just be amongst, like, that community yeah. of people. Like, you don't even know some people. But they'll be like, ah, oh, my God. Ah, <laughs> Eid tomorrow, do it, yo. <laughs> First of all, I feel like Eid in Nigeria, Eid is a national holiday. <laughs> Muslims, Christian, what they'll be asking you, where's the meat? Where's the food? Where's the meat? Where are we celebrating that? Yeah, but the thing is, like, some Christians don't know the difference between the Eid of Fitr yeah. and the other Eid. You know what they say? They say, is this the meat that we get meat? <laughs> That's usually what they ask you. They'll be like, oh, Shama Gwaran this time around. I'll be like, no, it's the next Eid. <laughs> or if it's that Eid, they'll be like, ah, don't. but funny enough, 
they sometimes already know which id you're getting me. So they'll be like, I'm a Gagaramio. And then my classmates too will be like, ah, Latifa, you're bringing it, you're bringing meat for us next week, blah, blah, blah. This person is bringing it for me this tomorrow. You're bringing it. So they always have schedules. So people, you just share. I love the whole community. Like as much, like, even Christmas time, you know how like your yeah. neighbors will bring food. They'll be like, oh, but even though like some people celebrate, some people don't celebrate, but you still feel like, okay, you're part of yeah. like the whole thing and stuff like that. So here in America, we're still fighting to get eat as a holiday. I'm telling you, like <laughs> at work, I always be like, you people get Easter. I don't need Easter. Right. But, but you know what though? You yeah. know what though? Eid was actually a culture shock for me. Really? When I went to Nigeria and I celebrated Eid, we prayed outside. Yeah. And everybody brought their own mat. Yes. I was confused because you don't hear. <laughs> they provide we, everything. Yeah, they provide everything. You go to the masjid. Mm-hmm. And then another thing is that after you pray, you go home to eat in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Here, there's food. The masjid gives food and we yeah. eat. I was, I was like, wait, we got to go home now? Mm-hmm. Like, eat is only come and go home? Mm-hmm. So, honestly, that kind of, like, that was yeah. something I have to understand. Like, no, like, the way they do eat here, mm-hmm. you come to the message, you pray, and then the celebration is at home. And then at some point, everybody started going mm-hmm. to each other's house. Yeah. And then eat is literally a weekend in Nigeria. It's literally, they school give you is holiday. Closed. Like, <laughs> school is closed. Week. Market is closed. Very few markets are open because they mm-hmm. know some people are going to need some last minute yeah. stuff. Yeah. But it's literally a national holiday. Yeah, it that is. That we don't have. But that was my own culture shock, the opposite. Like, I know back, uh, what's it called? In Nigeria, I would go to eat, come back home, then go to my friend's place or go to, like, my grandma's place. Like, mm-hmm. that's the time, like, you get to go to other people's place. Like, yeah. oh, go eat here, here. But here, you know, everybody's just like, oh, but I have to go to work after. But I have yes. to do this. So, like, that's why the masjid actually provides food for mm-hmm. people that are going to work or do have other stuff that they have to do later on. So, you just yeah. grab food, eat, have fun, and then know that, okay, you're going back home to go and do with your responsibilities that you yeah. have. So, I was like, damn, you're like, ready. it's not a whole day event type of thing. Even oh. me, like, this year, I'm sad because the next day after eat, I have to work only because I'm trying to take off, like, a few days, not mm-hmm. too far. I'm just like, yeah. I, I won't even feel the festivity be like truly, truly. Yeah. It shouldn't even be you know, It should yeah. be like a national. No, holiday. for real, because like it, I think is going to be on a weekday. This, yeah, this um time, and to be honest, like I'm already like figure trying to figure out how yeah. to go around it. And then one other culture shock is the fact that like. They don't un- like my bosses do not understand what Ramadan or what that is concerning. Let me tell you, I've had five, ten coworkers ask me, I'll, like in the span of a week, mm-hmm. they keep asking me the same questions. Oh, you, so you don't drink water, or so you don't do this. Girl. I'm like, imagine they asked me this question in January, February, March. Now, like me, Mar- ending of March, you're still asking me the same thing. The water is and very I'm like, surprising. I'm <laughs> so like, wait, not even water. Because the way their own fasting typically goes is like yeah. you can't, you just have to pick one thing, mm-hmm. and that's that like, you're not whatever. And I'm yeah. like, so you can still drink water, you can do whatever. You're mm-hmm. just like trying not to like uh, do like a habit or something. Mm-hmm. But like personally, I always feel like that part shocks me because I'm like. But I've explained this to you. It's different if you don't explain it to yeah. them type of thing. So, I don't know. I hope one day yeah. they understand. But, like, one day I'm just not going to say anything. and be like, oh, yeah, okay. But Loki, in my mind, like, the way I move with people that aren't Muslim, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just assume that they're going to know about Ramadan. Yeah. I just feel like, I say, like, well, I was talking to my supervisor. I said, yeah, you know it's a month of Ramadan. He said, who? I said, yeah, you know it's a month of Ramadan. <laughs> I just... I just thought he would know. And you would think they would know, but yeah. they seriously. So what's that? And I was yeah. like, oh, so pretty much. And I basically mm-hmm. trying to tell him, like, you know, I'm going to need off. Yeah. I don't know what day. Mm-hmm. So I'll let you know the day before. <laughs> but here it's like, oh, so you don't know what day. I'm like, I don't know. When did, like, I would know two days before. Or maybe a day. <laughs> the, day uh, the day before. I might just say you that morning. Oh, it's Sunday. <laughs> Telling you. Corporate America is not for kids, especially as Muslims. I swear. I kind of want to know, would you raise your kids back home? A lot of people say, you know, maybe the first three, first five. But would you? Why and why not? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I think I would um, I would raise my kids wherever I'm at. So yeah. let's say if I'm here mm-hmm. and... That's where I see myself being in the next couple of years. I don't see, inshallah, yeah. I don't see myself moving back permanently back home mm-hmm. because of the fact that, like, I like the way 
I'm able to be independent, able to like get money for myself and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Back home, as much as like I love the environment, everything, it's just like there's always there's a difference between middle class and then the rich and things like that. And I personally don't feel like my mm. my children need to be in the in that type of environment. I want my children to be in an environment where they see that everybody is doing good and I don't know. I think that's me protecting my children, yeah. but that's how I want them to be. I want them to be like, in a way, they, I want them to be independent, seeing how it is to just, you know, figure out life for themselves and mm-hmm. things like that. But I'm still going to be there raising, like, you know, supporting them, being there. And I also like the community here. Like, as much as yeah. I like the community back home, I don't know. I, I feel like this is my new life. Mm-hmm. And it's just hard for me to... Imagine okay. going back home and yeah. having like I would love to take them for like months to you know maybe two months go visit Nigeria mm-hmm. or like be with my grandma my grandparents because some of my grandparents are there and I have grandparents here too so I just feel like see, because of the fact that like my whole family moved here okay. it's it, it changes my whole mindset yeah. because like I have more family here I just have extended family over there. So Indian mm-hmm. family is more over here. So that's why, like, okay. I would prefer, you know, raising yeah. them here in the, you know, over time. What that about you? <laughs> Me, I think, personally, like I've always said, I said I really want them to also experience that culture mm-hmm. back home. Because aside from the comfortness that Nigeria yeah. gives you, I feel like there are some ways, like, it, it teaches you a lot about yourself. Yeah. And it kind of... You you kind of grow a little quicker than your age. Like a ten mm-hmm. year old is literally doing something a fifteen year old would do. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that sense of culture brings a lot of respect and things like that. Just I naturally. see that. I think the reason why mm-hmm. I feel like I would they would get the same experience here is mm-hmm. because of the fact that my family is here and mm-hmm. the way my family is like uh, structured. structured. Yeah, because like. To be honest, you wouldn't know, like, my sister that has been here, like, they gave birth to her here, like, our last one. She, oh. you wouldn't tell that she came, or she was born here mm. because of the way she is, like, the okay. way everybody is just around her, like, even my cousins and stuff like that. I do have cousins that, you know, they typically want to <laughs> go with the American culture, uh-huh. but if you're willing to learn the Nigerian culture, to be honest, you would actually do better for yourself yeah. and learn that se- sense of culture, sense of um, community and stuff like that. So yeah. I guess it's just how you raise your kids in the sense. long run and who yeah. you have them surrounded by because the American culture can be easily adapted. But like, mm-hmm. if you say that, okay, I really want to train my child how to speak here, but I want to train them how to know how to be independent and know themselves better. You know, you make it, allow make it easy. I feel like I got best of both worlds, to be honest, because I, I went to school in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. So there are certain things I just wouldn't do. Like, it don't matter how old I, how old I get, I will always respect my elders. I will always be yeah. that because that's part of our culture. Even things like, you know, kneeling down, that's something I don't do personally, but I always go in for a hug because that's just something that's yeah. just a part of culture. But yeah, I don't think I would raise my kids completely back home, but definitely, like I always say, summer, take them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I would leave them by myself. Like, kind of like what you said, mm-hmm. wherever they're at is where I'm at too. You know, one thing I just remembered, there's this culture shock that, um, people don't realize, um, you know how back in Nigeria, we always travel It's because you said something about child taking them to uh-huh. Nigeria for summer. We actually travel a lot back in like Nigerians travel a lot mm. and people don't realize that, Oh, you've been to Europe. You've been to this, you've been to that. How did you have the money to go? Like that's one culture shock. People here mm. are like, mm. oh, yeah, because over here, everyone's just working, schooling. So no one really has that time to travel unless mm. like you've, Grow, like you know now that we get to travel mm-hmm. as much but i feel like a lot of people don't travel over here than back home in nigeria and you're right you're absolutely right imagine you having a place that you work and they're literally telling you you only have 14 days out of 365 mm-hmm. days for yourself yeah i feel like i don't really know how the system is in nigeria how the mm-hmm. schedule is but definitely it seems as though there's a lot of flexibility like us we're scared to lose our job Nigeria <laughs> you lose your job today you get another one tomorrow like Basically. <laughs> there's there's something to do everywhere here and it's not and before you even get to the stage or even mm-hmm. getting a job degree school. yeah for school money yeah it's just so much it's so, so much ugh. like it's so overwhelming and i feel like 
um, people here don't take, like, they don't take leisure time. Their mm. leisure, type of leisure time is, like, maybe going to the park or going yeah. to, like, the, um, what's it called, arcade games and stuff like that. Whereas in Nigeria, our own leisure time is to travel, go to Paris, go to this, and you come back and you tell all the stories mm. to your friends, and your friends will be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to this next day, I'm going to Dubai, I'm going to this. Uh-huh. So it's always so fun, like, sharing those experiences. My parents, <laughs> mm-hmm. so now my parents have only been to two countries, Nigeria and Omar. Oh, wow. I'm doing a Saudi. That's interesting. Only. And honestly, truly, they don't even have any interest. <laughs> like, it doesn't interest them. They're like, what I need to go there for? I need to make money so I can build a house in Nigeria. I need to make yeah. money so I can sell. Like, literally. But parents, <laughs> I think that's the shift in, like, your mindset. Mm-hmm. Because back home, you're comfortable enough to yes. want to go take all the streets and stuff. But over here, all you're focused on is like work, trying to raise your family, trying to make sure like your kids are good and things like that. So parents do not have that leisure. That's what my dad always says. Like my dad is fed up with America. First of all, <laughs> he always says, when I get older, he, he old, but he said, when I get older, I'm moving back home. He said, in Nigeria, I was rich, <laughs> which is true. Like I believe him in yeah. Nigeria. Me too. I'll be stupid rich, but here, baby, can I borrow fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> Somebody just borrow me. No, the debt, and that's another mm-hmm. thing. America is built off of debt. Oh yes. Oh God, I had Girl. to learn that. That because I had to they open a credit you. card. So before opening a credit card, I always thought everything had to be cash. So I pay, you provide services, mm-hmm. and that's it. But then I realized that a lot of people that are actually making all this money, that are, you know, business owners and stuff, they actually, some of them live off of this credit card. Yes. And I'm like, bro, this is interesting because Nigeria, you buy, if you want to buy iPhone 13 Pro Max or 15, you, you got to have it. Yeah, you pay the cash. Not that you're like going to like, uh-huh, you know, pay over time. So I had to learn months. all of that. I was like, wow, this yeah. is interesting. But it does help in the economy that we have because yeah. they know that not everybody has that money to pay everything over at but that it moment. Can you though. But it can because that's the thing. Because I know you know when I was literally like fifteen, mm-hmm. I fifteen. What did I need to buy, Abby? I think I wanted to buy an iPhone or something. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's this loan store. You know, I went to go apply for a loan. Literally, I went to go apply for it because for my mind, I don't have the money. Somebody's gonna give me the money. <laughs> I didn't even know all the interest of me. I'm thinking oh, somebody oh, yeah, give me money. Give money. Yeah. So, Oh but my I God. eventually did not take the yeah. loan. When I started telling my dad, I said, damn, I should never told you. <laughs> now I can't get the loan. <laughs> but I did not know interest. Yeah. A lot of these things you learn over time mm-hmm. based off of experience. Yeah. And I enjoy, there's no such thing as interest. And I think that's also like, that makes uh, the Muslim community like um, mm-hmm. foster because like here, you know how they're always telling you, don't um, get rebound, yes. don't get this. But over there, they don't have those conversations because they don't, that's, need, they it. don't need it type of thing. So, subhanAllah, yeah. you know, that's a, a shock in communities yeah. and stuff like that. All right, so we have had some amazing discussions. I think it's really important for people to know these type of things because yeah. even till now, I feel like I'm still learning mm-hmm. and I'm sure you're still learning. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of things in America you learn as you go. You yeah. just have to make mistakes. So to wrap up this video, what is some advice that you have for someone trying to settle in America or is ready to make that transition? What can make their life a little easier or less a- a- anxious? Uh, I would say just always ask for help. Mm. Um, always like try to be inquisitive. Mm. Um, if you don't know it, just you know find a community community that will help you like learn through this whole so you don't make the same mistakes some other people you can make mistakes but like so you don't repeat some mistakes that can be easily avoided so i'll say you know try ask questions look for a community community um just be open-minded because sometimes you know having that same traditional mindset can might may or may not help you in certain situations so those are like the few tips um i have and overall, me just throwing this out there, don't ever lose yourself. Yeah. Always keep the culture that you have in you. Like, mm-hmm. even my sister the other day was like, damn, Muti, you, you low-key a five. And I said, yes, I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's some things I would never let go. I'm just, I'm a Nigerian girl living yeah. in America, you know? So, the uh, our culture is amazing. Don't yeah. ever feel like 
that you need part. to fit in. Don't ever feel like you need to, you know, jeopardize the culture that you have built, the culture that you have grown up from, mm -hmm. just because of this world. Like she said it right here because that's the <laughs> thing that I actually forgot because I always make sure I mm. stay true to myself. Mm. Things that you always know that is right, mm. keep make sure you keep to it. Don't yeah. say, oh, it's um, because this person is doing this, this, this. Mm. Oh, I want to do that no if it's right to you then do it but if you think oh there's a if you come out whatever then don't do it just yeah. stick true to yourself and be yourself at the in the long run set it right set it right well y'all thank y'all so much for watching this video and thank you for coming on here to talk about this this is truly amazing um, <laughs> thank you for having me i'm so shy y'all please <laughs> But I did it. Have the love. I'm so grateful to be here. And yeah. I hope that this was beneficial to you guys. Absolutely. And if y'all have any further questions, please feel free to ask some questions down below. I know off the bat of my head, Houston does have a large Nigerian community. I know um where else? Maryland, the DMV area has a uh, large community. I think Atlanta too. Um, Atlanta, New York. California, New York. Yeah, Cali? They, Cali does. I didn't know that. Cali, they do. Actually, when we went for um Yasser, mm. that's how I knew. I know New York does. Mm -hmm. So those are just some some of your starters. Yeah. So if y'all are looking for a place for a large laundry community, those are just a few. Yeah. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and round up right here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You already know it's on a pop and I'm seeing you next week in video. Bye. Period. Bye. Bye. y'all. We want to do it again. Cut. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. You are no sign of popping. I'm going to see you next freaking video. Period. Yeah. <laughs>